I walked up to you with a briefcase full of money and said, it's all yours if you're able to define cholesterol in one sentence, would you be able to walk away richer? I'm gonna teach you cholesterol the way that I learned. And you're gonna to wanna to watch until the end because that's when we'll reveal the actual culprit here. But in order to understand that, we gotta get these steps first. Buckle up. Cholesterol itself is a form of fat. It's one of the three major forms of fat in the body. We have phospholipids, which are the walls of your cells. We have triglycerides, which are the literal fat storage units we think of when we see fat on the body. And we have cholesterol. All right, sweet, let's make it practical. You have butter and you put it on top of a fat stack of jacks. So on this plate, we got some protein, we got some carbs and we got some fat. Let's look at specifically that fat piece, so that butter. So as we know, we call butter saturated fat, but let's pause here a bit because people don't fully understand this. We call butter a saturated fat because it has a high percentage of saturated fat. It still does have unsaturated fat as well. Go with this example. I grew up in a neighborhood with a high percentage of black people. So we can refer to that neighborhood as a black neighborhood. But of course, there are some other races as well. Not really. So this butter gets down in our digestive system and we begin to break it up. We get some cholesterol, some free fatty acids, which are basic units of fat, but we run into a bit of an issue. Fat and water don't mix. So how can we move this fat around in the blood when the blood is mostly water? The answer is lipoproteins or, or lipoproteins, depending on which lab codist you ask, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna keep it lipo. We're lipo kind of people. A lipoprotein is a vehicle for fat. I said a lipoprotein is a vehicle for, sometimes you gotta say it twice. Let's pause, let's break this word down, lipo. Lipo is derived from lipid, and lipid is just a fancy word for fat. And then proteins. Proteins are the body's structural units. Just like in the real world, we have items that just do things. Backpack uh, can hold your stuff. Shoes can protect your feet. Proteins are the body's structural everyday items. That's important because cholesterol isn't what we think it is. It's actually lipoproteins that are doing the work. And you're gonna love this. Structurally, a lipoprotein is just like a golf ball filled with fat, right? Filled with triglycerides and cholesterol. Fat is always being transported to and fro within the body. So as we speak right now, fat is inside of these lipoproteins and they're just being delivered to where they need to be. And the chief regulator of this system is the liver. The liver is in charge of making the literal Golf ball. structure of the lipoprotein in charge of telling them where to go and it has them come back kind of like an airport now when we hear my cholesterol is high my cholesterol levels are so and so I got too much bad cholesterol they are talking about what we're about to go over next HDL and LDL these are not types of cholesterol. HDL stands for high density lipoprotein and LDL stands for low density lipoprotein. These are often referred to as good cholesterol or bad cholesterol, when in reality they aren't cholesterol at all. Cholesterol is just one of the passengers within the vehicle of the lipoprotein. For example, when the president is going to and fro, he's in a line of limos, you know, with the little presidential flag. No one ever goes, hey look, it's a line of limos with a little presidential flag. We go, hey look, it's the president. We just point out the significant piece and we understand that the limos are just what's transporting him. Now, can HDL and LDL really be good or bad? No, they are referred to that way because of their function. So in the blood vessels, we got this cellular highway, right? We got red blood cells going to and fro. We got uh, some immune cells. We got a bunch of stuff that's just moving and getting to where it needs to be. Another thing that's in the cellular highway are our lipoproteins, right? So this HDL, these, these LDLs holding the fat. LDL is in charge of delivering fat. So it could be delivered delivering triglycerides, it can be delivering cholesterol. It just drops off these fats in certain destinations in the body and returns to the liver to be refilled. Just like an Amazon delivery truck, it's gonna go out and get to certain homes, drop off the packages, and then go back to the central hub to get more packages. And real quick, so you can flex on folks who ask, cholesterol has three possible destinations. Cholesterol can go into cell membranes to make them more rigid, kind of like how pillars would hold up a building. Cholesterol is used to make bile, bile is in charge of breaking down fat globs when we ingest them. Imagine tearing pieces off of a cotton ball to make it smaller. Lastly, cholesterol can be used to make many hormones in the body, including testosterone and estrogen. So if LDL is doing the delivering, then HDL is doing the opposite, right? The picking up and the scavenging. It's sent out by the liver and it goes to all these places where the fat was dropped off and it picks up any remnants, any leftover fat that was unused. It's gonna go ahead and pick that up and return to the liver. Kind of like when you get a toddler to clean up their toys, but they all 
always miss a few toys because they're toddlers. So you have to go behind them and pick up and really clean. But Johnny, how is this connected to heart attacks? And cholesterol so far sounds harmless. I got the, 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 the no, this is good stuff, this is good stuff. So in a regular normal system, HDL and LDL are both doing their thing. We can be happy, healthy, dance and smile forever and more. It is when LDL goes unchecked that when the problems occur. Reel it in. Let's say you do get the briefcase and I'm feeling generous. Uh, let, let me give you another briefcase. You know what, you take another and another and another and another. Now you're just juggling a bunch of briefcases and you're like, this is, this is a lot of, all right, I get it. And I'm like, but have another briefcase. And I just keep piling them on. LDL can only deliver, it can only deliver, it can only do its job. And when we have that extra left over, it has to put it somewhere. The body loves fat. It is extremely stingy with fat. Every little piece of fat that it gets, it wants to keep. So it's just gonna store, store, store if we're not using it. And we would want it to, right? Like for example, if we were running a business, we would want to save as much money as possible and spend as little as possible because if we run out of money, we're done. And just like the fat in the body, it ain't trying to declare no bankruptcy. I couldn't afford a present this year. So I got you this box. So it can get a little chaotic with too much active LDL. If HDL is not able to keep up and we just keep storing and storing and storing, we're gonna start storing inappropriately. This is activating a cell in the immune system known as the macrophage. And if you know anything about the macrophage, you know that it just kind of sucks things up, just like Kirby, right? It just in ingests things. So we get these macrophages getting bigger and bigger like Squidward's thighs, and we call those foam cells. These foam cells start to literally close up our blood vessels, and that is when all heck is allowed to break loose. That's not great. That's terrible. Atherosclerosis, right? Uh, um, embolisms can come from this. Strokes can come from this. And of course, heart attacks can come from this. Now, it's extremely important to note this doesn't happen after one meal. This doesn't happen after 100 meals. This is a slow process that takes place over years. So don't trip. Since this is so fat central, right? We're using words like lipids, triglycerides, and fat this, fat that, and we find cholesterol on the scene, it's super easy to point that out as the culprit. We now know that the cholesterol that we eat, the cholesterol that we ingest, dietary cholesterol has little to nothing to do with this atherosclerotic process, right? This inappropriate storage of fat. I'm trying to find the most dramatic way to present this. We now know that the problem is actually sugar. It is actually sugar acting on the liver that makes it produce too much LDL, which is actually an entirely different biological process that I very much so, I'm, I'm squeezing my table. I very much so want to break down for you guys, obviously depending on how you respond to this, but I swear it's the most fascinating thing in the body. Well, there's a lot of fast, I'm going on a tangent, but it is sugar. The original butter video changed my life. <laughs> and um, if I haven't responded to your comment or if you haven't heard me say it yet, thank you um, just for being here. This is gonna be one of the most powerful communities on YouTube and I'm just super elated and super humbled, um, glory to God. Um, just super excited to learn with you and grow with you. So um, thank you for being here and uh, I'll see you in the next one. I'm gonna get about y'all way.